Everybody got her burner. It's Tuesday again. So that means. <laughs> no storage plate. Talk. That's Jag Talk from now on. Nudity on slick paper. Means it's Tuesday, yay! And it means we're doing another fucking sixties film trip called LSD Trip or Trap. Surprisingly, out of the trilogy of film strips, this one's bunk. Yeah, I didn't it have was, fun watching it. It wasn't very exciting. No, you would think because of the glue one and the weed one with all of its crazy art, you think this one would have some crazy art because it's LSD. No, not yeah. really. Yeah, LSD, I, you know, I guess it's supposed to be fun. I've never really had the effect. Yeah, it was pretty fun, but I would never, ever, ever do it again. It was really fun, but you'll never do it again. Yeah, because I spent most of my 20s doing fuck tons of it. So I'm good. Well, good, good for you. <laughs> so anyway, let's just start talking about this one, even, even though neither one of us fucking want to. It starts off with this tripping dude. Looking into a mirror, and he sees himself with like a spider body and a fucking head on top of a broom with an arm sticking out. I don't know what the fuck. Like, did you ever experience all that craziness? Fuck no. I can't describe. You know, it's almost impossible to describe what it's like to be tripping. I've only ever seen one thing ever get the actual visuals right. It was this documentary series that I think History Channel did all about the different drugs. And they were talking about this the doctor dude that accidentally discovered acid. And it showed, he was like first person, like point of view of him riding a bicycle. And then it just did the thing. And I was like, holy fuck. That was the closest I've ever seen anybody get to what it looks like to be tripping. I don't know if I can find if I can find that clip, I'll put it in there. But I've been looking for that clip for a while now, and I can't find it. So we'll see what happens. So the narrator dude describes acid. LSD is one of a group of drugs called hallucinogens. They are called by that name because they cause a person to have hallucinations. Hallucinations are like mirages. They're imaginary. They are the product of an imagination distorted by the drug. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yay. But they always do it in that PSA way, like, acid's bad. Acid do things bad to you. Does acid create creativity? No! And you're like, how, how do you know? How much research did you really do? Yeah, and then they talk about peyote and stuff like that, and it's taste and whatnot. One such drug is peyote, a substance obtained from a cactus plant found mainly in the arid regions of Mexico. A button-shaped growth on the cactus plant is the source of the drug. Peyote is bitter tasting, so it is usually combined with coffee, tea, wine, or milk to make it palatable. Yeah, where it comes from. What kind of, what, what the hell was that are you drinking? Trish's Watermelon Mountain Dew. Ew, is that any good? I didn't like it at first, but yeah, it's kind of good. But it's kind of like, kind of tart, so I'm all like, it's not the best thing to be drinking while talking. Yeah. I didn't think about that. But now they talk about like psilocybin, you know, like mushroom stuff. Psilocybin is another hallucinogen. It is found in a Mexican mushroom plant. While not widely known or used, psilocybin is obtainable in liquid, powder, or crystalline form. That'd be like down in a whole thing of mint ginger ale and be like, yeah, you know? Ugh, yeah, I couldn't even imagine it. Just mint ginger ale is fucking gross. I mean, you have to mix it with something. You can't just have it. Yeah, well, I'm sure people do. I mean, you could just have it. <laughs> you, know, you know, it would be like downing. It'd be like downing a whole bunch of like just squirt. You know, that fucking grapefruit soda. Yeah. That's fucking, it's all fuck. People mix it in stuff, but it's just soda. And I don't know why I'm saying soda. I never say soda. Soda. <laughs> it's like soda. So the enthusiasm on this episode, not up to par. Kick it up a notch. <laughs> Neither one of us can do it. We're both just like, eh. Kick it up eh. a notch. Dude, like I look, I know this isn't running at the same time or whatever, but like, you know, like every like that'd be like okay, the Titanic just ripped the hole in the thing. 
we now realize it's going down. We hear the music playing and shit. You know what I mean? People are screaming in horror. But you're like, nah, dude, come on. We got to be enthusiastic about this thing. I'm like, but the stern's lifting. You're like, nah, no. Come on. We got to keep being happy. You know, <laughs> we're going to be the last dumb fuckers holding on to the railing as it's going down. Going, and that's the worst movies on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So anyway. On that note, marijuana, like they said in the fucking last one, is it a hallucinogen? Wow. It's a hulu. Wow. Hallu- how- fuck it. Marijuana, long classified among the narcotics, is actually an hallucinogenic drug. Marijuana is usually smoked as cigarettes and is a very unpredictable psychedelic. Well, it definitely doesn't help with speech now, does it? And a hallucinogen. <laughs> so blah blah fucking blah morning glory seeds and nutmeg and stuff other substances which produce hallucinogenic effects are such unlikely substances as morning glory seeds nutmeg gasoline and glue is that the stuff that bill cosby used to put out his victim didn't they call it something i have no idea spanish fly or some craziness well spanish flies like you know not a real thing? Well, I mean, he, he said it was. Was it, did he? I don't know. I'm not I mean, Wikipedia. It's basically a roofie, right? No, like, well, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Moving on to something I know about. LSD is more powerful. LSD is more powerful than these. But there are other drugs more powerful than LSD. But STP is even more powerful than that. STP is four times as potent as LSD. One authority has estimated that LSD has already caused more genetic damage than the atomic bomb. You mean like Stone Temple Pilots? (laughs) You don't know know anything about Rufio's. Rufio's. Rufio. Uh, you don't know anything about, but you know a ton about uh, chloroform because you use it on all these homeless dudes that you like to take home and and uh, punish uh, <laughs> anally, and then you eat them. So there's no, no evidence. No, normally I just chloroform myself. It's the only way I can sleep anymore. That's why you're so big. People think it's because of pizza and fucking bird cake. It's not. You've been eating homeless dudes for years. The problem is you got to switch to a low-calorie homeless guy. You're eating too many fatties. So now we get to learn how LSD was discovered, like I said, by that doctor dude, but he was trying to cure, like, migraines and shit. LSD was first synthesized by Dr. Albert Hoffman, a Swiss chemist, in 1938. Seeking treatment for migraine headaches, Dr. Hoffman did not discover the hallucinogenic properties of LSD until five years later, when he accidentally ingested a small amount. The drug, in spite of a quarter of a century of study and experimentation, is still controversial, imprecise, and unpredictable. I love how you you quickly covered up your 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 on the side gig of homicide. So dude describes on how to fucking take it, like you know, he's talking about putting it on a cookie. It is usually taken by mouth after being poured over a sugar cube or on a cookie. Out of all the acid I have never done, or I have ever done, I have never taken acid on a cookie. Why would you put it on a cookie? I mean, people, I've had it on sugar cubes and stuff. Well, how do they get it on, like, what's the deal with stamps? I never quite understood that. How do they get it on, and what the hell is a stamp? Well, there's, like, the little fucking blotter acid, which were, like, you know, you could get it in sheets. Right? And you would be like, you'd get a little fucking little teeny tiny little square. Let me see if I can. It's been t- like 20 years. So, you know, but like you'd get like a little fucking square of paper. I don't know. This is, seems kind of big, right? But like, yeah, you get a little fucking little square of paper and then you'd be like, oh, and you like, you know, bled it on your fucking tongue for like ever and stuff. And then you just kind of like chew up the little piece of paper and eat it. Then there is also, <laughs> well, I guess we're just going to talk about my. Or just talk about acid in general. Well, but, how, like, yeah, you, how do they get it on the paper? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, who's making this shit to the point where it's that, you know, it can't be I think mass. 
spray it on there? Well, now we're going to get into talking about... Then there's gel tabs. It's, like, mixed in with, like, gelatin. Remember those, like, breath strips? Yeah. Like you, it's, like, they kind of look like that, right? And they kind of dissolved like that, but they were... Like little squares, but of like gelatiny type stuff. And then you don't know, let that dissolve. And then you could either get it like, you know, actually like in a vial. And then people would like take a sugar cube and drip like at one hit for every fucking drop. Like dip, dip, dip. You know? <laughs> okay, clearly I don't know anything about the acid world. That's, that's the only way I've ever done it. I've never... They talk about fucking injecting it into veins. A few seeking a stronger and more immediate effect have injected it directly into a vein. I ain't never seen nobody do that shit. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to do that. That just seems like a shitty way to do it. <laughs> you know, it's just like you can just in your mouth. I'm perfectly happy with marijuana. I, 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 it, it, it's, it's, it does. She does everything I need her to do, and she doesn't take me to any crazy places. You know, and, and, and the nicest thing about it is that you can function. It's not like any of the other ones. You can actually function. And sometimes you can function better. Yeah, but hell, dude, I don't even think about it now. Like, my acid experience ended, like, 20 years ago. Can you imagine probably nowadays with the technology and stuff? There's probably, like, you know, acid foams. Like, gastro, what's that fucking, that food science stuff? Where, molecular gastronomy, whatever. They, like, make foams out of, like, weird, like, celery foam. And, like, little fucking balls of, like, little gravy caviar and all that stuff. What? You have no, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? No. Gravy. It's just, well, I'm not gravy. You can take any liquid and make caviar out of it. It's a scientific, like, process. You it doesn't matter. So anyway, medical uses for LSD are unpredictable. LSD does have medical uses, but these are still in the experimental stage. Even under the strictest medical supervision, the results are still unpredictable. And then he tells us what happens when you take LSD. They say it gives new insights and new intellectual powers. Wonderfully vivid spiritual and intellectual rewards are promised by some of LSD's proponents. Such claims appeal to many people, especially young people. But what are the scientific facts? You see Lucy in the sky with diamonds, apparently. Yeah, he said, I've never had the crazy fucking hallucinations. It's more of just like an audio and visual thing. Like, yeah, I've never seen things that weren't there. Well, apparently you weren't getting the best acid in uh, rural Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, well, it was Pittsburgh, but, you know, that's a big enough city. But, yeah, I mean, no, nah, dude, it was good stuff. But, like, I don't know. Okay. Anybody, if they ever, if they want to out themselves, they've done acid. Put down in the comments below, have you actually ever seen something that wasn't there? Or was it just the fucking filling and stuff that I'm can't describe where you see like the tracers and that kind of stuff so put it down below because i know a lot of partiers do watch us yeah put it down below and let us know if you're a junkie <laughs> <laughs> but i've also noticed most of our fucking viewers are older too so they're all old heads that probably just like me fucking gave that shit up like 20 years ago well yeah because it gets to I me mean, you know you can't it's not something you can sustain forever well, there was that one dude we knew that was like a friend of a friend of a friend that blew it, burned himself out with acid. He was pretty fucked up. Okay, well, yeah, we know Turtlehead, but... Yes, that's but... some old Primal Soup fucking reference right there, man. Yeah, this right. dude was so fucking fried that, yeah, he was fried. He had a colostomy bag. That acid, fuck, acid fucked him up so bad he had a colostomy bag. So don't do acid, people. There you yeah. go. Yeah, well, don't do so much acid that you blow yourself up. So yeah, blah, 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 stats of LSD users. A study of 114 users of LSD uncovered some interesting characteristics of the typical LSD user. His average age is 23, although the range of users spans 15 to 43 years of age. Blah, 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 more stats. 68% of the users are males, but the number of female users, 31.6%, is still substantial. 
Blah, 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 more stats. LSD users are a cross-section of the population. About 88.4% are Anglo-Saxon. More than 72% of the users surveyed had taken LSD only one to three times. And then he talks about bad trips. The LSD user had an almost uniformly bad experience with the drug. And panic. 13.1% suffered from overwhelming panic. Violence. Another 12.3% committed some violent act while under the influence of the drug. Murder and suicide. Eight and six tenths percent experienced homicidal or suicidal urges as a result of taking the LSD. I've never had, I think, this sucks. I wish, I wish there was like, I wish you kind of had some experience because it's like, I'm kind of talking to, you know, not only say I'm not talking to no one, but just, I've never had a bad trip. I can say myself, there's a couple of times where I wished I wasn't tripping anymore, like hour four or hour six into it, but I've never had a bad trip. Yeah, I, I've only had, I've only uh, experienced uh, mushrooms, so not the LSD. I have no idea what the hell it is, what it does. Well, we, I, we know that mushrooms makes it so you can't function enough to do an episode. I mean, you can be you can be in the episode, but you can't function in it. Like I'll be there, but I won't be there. <laughs> I know some people know what episode that is. Some people don't. So there you go. Find that episode. Well, how are you gonna tell them to find the episode if you're not gonna tell them which one it is? They have to tell us. But I know I told a lot of like a lot of people know what episode it is. Like the Discord people, and we used to do that. I know, like, some of them knew what the episode was, because, fuck, didn't we talk about it in a fucking watch party one time? Yeah, I just couldn't sit, I couldn't stop smiling like an idiot, and I, and I, I... Uh, hello? Hello. <laughs> that was Jamie calling me. Probably be like, I'm on my way home. So anyway, blah blah blah. Mental disease. After ingesting LSD, more than 34 percent suffered from underlying overt mental disease. Blah blah blah. Hospitalization. And 15.8 percent required an extended period of hospitalization. When studied scientifically, the LSD user is not a very pretty picture. You know what, dude? Is there anything in this that I need to uh, really bring up, or can we just basically wrap this up? Oh, he talks about, like, permanent trip. Too often, what was supposed to be a mild trip becomes a permanent catatonia, or a mental stupor. What is billed as a mind-expanding experience becomes, instead, a long-term despondency and mental-emotional withdrawal. It's all the same crap. I mean, for what it's just, like, the most of it, for the majority of it, it's it don't do this because it does this. This does that. Don't do this. And da 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 da. And then of course they say like, it has no medicinal blah 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 blue. Like you know, back in the day they did no research on this shit. They just said it, and that was it. You know, and uh, but like, <laughs> but all the while, you know, there's a more powerful drug out there, which is called alcohol. You know, that's more powerful than, than than they'd like to mention, but rarely, you know, readily available everywhere. You know, the hypocrisy as far as drugs go in this country is is just absolutely off the charts. Well, you know? just hip hypocrisy in general in this country is off the well, fucking charts. Take a guy who's selling a drug to a guy and they put that guy in jail for selling that drug to that guy. But then they take this other guy who's selling a drug to a guy and they give him a nice house and car, you know, until that guy that he sold that drug to sells it to another guy <laughs> illegally. And then that guy goes to jail, you know, but the other guy who sold him the drug originally, he gets to keep his job and keep selling that drug to that guy and probably another guy, and another guy, another guy, another guy, you know, Dr like, dude. I read, like, read the reading up on, on um, you know, like the Oxycontin and, and just, the, you know, uh, that whole pandemic with that fucking deal, you know, or epidemic with the, the uh, yeah. 
uh, you know what I mean, uh, painkillers and shit. But um, mm-hmm. like that shit, fucking, uh, you know, doctors were just giving people thousands and thousands, of, like just like, hey man, here's the lifetime supply, you know, of of, of fucking some high high octane painkillers, and you're like, holy shit, you know, like that'd be like. You know, a drug dealer would be like, hey, man, here's a whole bag of heroin. Have a great day. You know? I mean, what the hell's the difference? Yeah, it's not called hill- hillbilly heroin for nothing. But anyway, blah, 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 LSD and fucking death. LSD and death are close friends. LSD itself may not cause death in the person who takes it. However, it has been known to cause many suicides and homicides. Like a motherfucker jumps out the window and shit. One user jumped to his death from a fourth floor window after taking the drug. And just like glue, it makes you want to fight a train. Another person jumped in front of an oncoming train without realizing the consequences of his act. I've been pretty high before. I've never wanted to go fight a train. How about you? Yeah. You ever wanted to go head to head with a locomotive? Not to fight it. I mean, I've contemplated just jumping in front of one every once in a while. I'm kidding. Yeah, but that wasn't to stop it because you thought you were Superman. You just wanted to make the whole, you know, stupid existence. <laughs> but I'm kidding anyway. I've never actually thought about jumping in front of a train. So anyway, now he talks about like repeat trips. Like all oh, months later, you could just start tripping out. There's the risk of a repeat trip. When the original effects of LSD wear off, there is still the danger of a return of the hallucinogenic symptoms. Weeks or even months later, even though no additional drug is taken. That has not happened ever to me. I don't know why I said that all weird like that, but I did. What? No, I said we was talking about repeat trips. But he also says it can cause seizures. It can cause leukemia and deformed babies. Mounting evidence suggests that LSD can cause convulsions, leukemia, and can result in deformity in babies of LSD-using parents. There is evidence that LSD causes a chromosome deformity that can result in birth defects. Is there anything back in that? Or is that just the narrator? Shit up. Oh. But it's just like, dude, that's like this these videos, they're like the old school QAnon, you know, just fucking making shit up about stuff, no facts behind it. Just, hey, we think it does this. We think it gives babies third arms and stuff. It's like, is there any research behind it? Do you cite anything, like any universities or doctors, anything backing it up? No! It's just fucking opinion. It's like watching, like, this is, this, this, these videos were made by Tucker Carlson's great granddaddy or something, you know? Yeah, but here. We- was a bullshit artist, and my daddy was a bullshit artist, and <laughs> my great great grandchildren are probably going to be the best bullshit artist ever. So I guess it could turn you into a monster from like, you know, Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde or whatever, because we got the one kind of cool picture where it's just like all these different heads slowly turning into a monster. When combined with other drugs, LSD is even more devastating in its effects. Marijuana and other hallucinogens can multiply the dangerous effects of LSD. When taken in combinations, they can be uncontrollable. I mean, I'd be kind of, I mean, like, what do you, I don't know, it'd be kind of cool, you know, in a way, like, as long as you had control, you know, you don't want to grow into, like, like a league of extraordinary gentlemen, you know, you don't want to turn into that one because you kind of didn't have too much control over himself there for a bit, you know? Well, it's, that the whole point of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is him not having control? Well, yeah, I guess. But uh, but then again, he, he kind of did have control. You know, toward the end of the film, he was pretty much on board. And he wasn't like, you know, I don't know. Well, because then that, well, whatever. This is not a fucking dissection of <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's me bringing up the very end of this LSD thing because it is explosive and a trap. LSD is not a plaything. It is a dangerously destructive drug and should be handled only by medically competent researchers. In the hands of any other person, the drug is as devastating to human life as an explosive. There is a trap in every LSD trip. The only way to avoid the trap is to cancel the trip before it begins. No more film trap. strips. <laughs> no more film strips. I'm, I'm over it. Good.
Me too. Good. On that tired, note. You know, because for one, I mean, like, to, just to end it up, I'm tired of hearing the fucking banjo ding between every fucking thing. Every time the guy says something, you know, it goes boing. And I'm like, stop it. That's annoying. That's how you knew when to fucking switch the film strip, man. I don't care. It's still, it still was annoying. It sounded like some fucking hillbilly strumming a banjo. Well, I know they haven't come out yet, but you're really going to hate the reviews because I left those in every time. Well, that's great. Good for you. Yeah. I was going to say, you're going to hate those. I hate on, you. On that note, for Gutter Bird, we'll see you later. This stupid thing keeps advertising menace to society. I'm like, wow, you know, I, I've seen it like a several times now. It keeps passing by. And I'm like, yeah, still doesn't make me want to watch it, though. I mean, it was. I mean, I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't know. I guess it was good. You remember Menace to Society? Yeah, I remember that and Boys in the Hood. Yeah. They're Rock good. They are. They're, they are good movies. But, yeah, I'm kind of. Yeah, they're you know they're sad movies, you know none of them oh, had yeah. really well. I don't quite remember. Uh, I don't know. It's been a long time. You know, I saw the other day Class Act. Cool. I didn't watch it. I just saw that it was on there. I'm like, ha! Ah. And I told yeah, Jamie, I'm like, hey, look, hidden play, and she's like, who the hell's that? And I was like, never, never mind. <laughs> So, yeah, are we going to do a Chronicles? Because I'll start and stop. We'll start, stop, jump again. Um, yeah. People who are promoting the use of LSD say there is little danger in the use of hallucinogens. They say why it is no more harmful than aspirin or riding in an automobile. But what is the truth? Responsible investigators say the drug exerts a powerful, often damaging effect upon the human system. It seriously impairs behavior. Dr. James L. Goddard, commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, says taking LSD is a game of chemical Russian roulette that can have devastating consequences. So, yeah, this would be interesting and fun to do this episode without bringing up any of that fucking bullshit at all. Yeah, right. Good luck. Oh, I'm going to say, dude, it's like, you know, like I said, two weeks, two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks. I'm out of beer. Yeah, I'm out of beer. I live in beer. <laughs> <laughs> we got our fucking asses handed to us today at work. Yeah, and we got we got pretty busy today too. And I'm like, don't these people realize that there's a stay at home? <laughs> a stay at home god damn it Fucking but yeah dude I mean for real hand it to us I was like I was like oh well I worked yesterday and it was slow as fuck so I'm like oh I'm not going to be an asshole and over prep or anything so stuff goes bad so I just you know I'm playing that weird dance where it's like you try to fucking prep but you don't know if you're going to be fucking dead as fuck because some days people seem to be smart and not come out. And then other days like today, fucking everybody and their mother is like, I want breakfast. Yeah, right. Well, I guess they're like, fuck it. Everything else is going to shit. Might as well go get breakfast and COVID. <laughs> breakfast and COVID. It's like a name of a restaurant. Like, Come on down to COVID and get yourself some sandwiches. Well, they weren't expecting it to be busy either. They didn't schedule a fucking dishwasher or nothing. So that basically became me. I basically washed dishes, did prep, fucking did omelets, fucking ran around like a crazy person. So, yeah. yeah. I'm tired and sore. Goddamn three-week break. And then, <laughs> you know, here... Welcome back to hell. Right? It didn't it usually how it works, though. Dude, I don't know, man. It's just like the thing that these things, these constant un laid off, not laid off, laid off, not laid off, makes me realize I really hate the fucking kitchen, dude. I mean, I've always known this, but 
fucking hell. I fucking hate it. Like, I don't know. I hate it. You're really backlit. Just letting you know. Like, the back's really bright. You're really dark. Ah! <laughs> Ugh. Fuck you, everything, Roland. Well, what's whatever happened with the t in front of the TV thing? Too lazy to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what about where you were when you were singing to your pussy? Don't, don't talk about me singing to my pussy. <laughs>